Today I have a very beautiful jazz ballad for you, which was very high up on your wish list. My one and only love in chord melody style. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Sandra Sherman. Greetings from Austria. My one and only love has some very interesting chord changes, which I'm going to show you slow and easy in this guitar lesson, note for note. I've also made taps and a backing track, which you can download from one of the links down below in the description box. And now grab your one and only love, your guitar, of course, and let's get started. of C and we have a regular jazz song form, A-A-B-A and 8 bars for each section. That makes a total of 32 bars. Here we go. All right, and here's the first phrase. We start with, uh, we're in the key of C major, as I said, and we start with thirds because the melody starts out really low at this tone, the G, so you can hardly put a chord around it. So I uh, harmonized it in thirds in the beginning. A third down from the G, fifth fret D string, is this guy, okay? Um, we start on a one and, one and, and now you add your pinky to the seventh of the uh, D string. Then my index goes to the fifth of the G string. One and two and. Let everything ring together because this is what chord melody sounds make sound really big. Let things ring into each other. Now we have an A minor chord. And uh, the melody is a D, so I have an A minor 11 chord. I take advantage of the open A string though. You could play like this as you're used to. I tend to use the open A string 
or the open strings a lot when I play chord melody because then I have fingers free for other stuff. So, third of B, five, five, and open A string. Then my pinky goes to the fifth of the uh, B string. Now an A minor nine chord, open A string again, five, 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 seven, and then the eighth of the B string. All right. D minor seven chord, regular D minor seven chord up to the uh, B string. I bar it because then I need my upper E string later on. So 10, 10, 10, 10, only to the B string. Now the E string. And now the, the first interesting chord change, F9 sharp 11. Here would be the F uh, on the 8th fret of the A, but we don't play it. This is an F9 chord. We start from the D string. 7, 8, 8, and here's the sharp 11 on the 7th fret. So we borrow this, 7, 8, 8, 7. And again, here would be the root. 8, which is already here, and the 6th of the B. 3, triple Alright, and then I go down, now we have an E altered chord. And it's always a problem with an E altered chord with the root or any altered chord with the root on top. It's hard to harmonize that. So uh, a lot of people do this, E7 chord. You can do that, but I find this pretty boring. So I invented my own chord and put the nine, the flat nine, sorry, in the bass. Instead of the E, I put the flat nine, the F in bass. So what I get is F on the eight of the A string, G sharp, D, and here is my melody, the E, right? That's a lot more interesting than this. Just one, one tone difference. Then E altered. Here's the E, it would be the E again. Six, seven, eight, eight. E seven sharp nine uh, flat 13 to be exact. And kind of resolves to uh, the minor, uh, the uh, major parallel. F major seven. Three, five, five, five. Second major parallel, sorry. Um, then the B string six and the five, which is already lying here. And a two, five, one in the key of A minor. That's B half diminished. Okay, let's check you have a good angle. Two, three, two, three. That's a regular two, uh, regular, um, half diminished. Where is my mind? Half diminished chord. Then an E7 flat nine chord. This is the melody. We substitute this, or actually it's not a substitution, with a diminished chord. It is a diminished chord and a seven flat nine chord at the same time. I have a video on that. It's called um, diminished arpeggios over dominant chords. Check it out, very interesting. Six, seven, six, seven, upper four strings. This is E seven flat nine, okay? And the resolution is the A minor seven. I have the G in the melody. So what I do is I, this would be an A minor seven. I take advantage of the open A string, five of D, five of G and eight of B. And then I put in a little dominant chord by just adding my middle finger to the sixth fret, which is the major third of the chord. And this is still ringing. And now I'll play the A, D and G strings, just the lower three strings, because I have no more melody here. This one is still ringing. And this resolves to the D minor better than just, better than just the A minor. So. And there's the resolution to D minor in the next phrase. But first, let's let's uh, let me play this for you at slow tempo, okay? Three, four, one.
and here's phrase number two and here's your promised resolution from the A7. We resolve it, middle finger down, to a D minor 11, five, 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 six. You can play a D minor seven if you like to. I prefer the more modern jazz sound and that's the D minor 11. Then the five of the E string, eight of B, six of B. B minor 11, seven, 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 five. Then the G string alone, while the rest is still ringing, of course. And now a B flat 13, and that's actually a tritone substitute. It, it stands for an E7 alter that leads us, uh, resolves to A minor, okay? And the composer did a tritone substitution. E would be the original chord, and a tritone is always this interval. And then you get a B flat 13. Six, six, seven, eight. Then a melody changes to this, and without uh, getting a knot in your fingers, you have to change your fingers. Okay, otherwise you can do it. That's six, six, seven, five, and now we have a B flat seven flat five due to the melody. All right. Resolution A minor seven. Actually, that's just a part of an A minor chord, right? You guys all know this chord. And the inner two strings are seven of D and five of G. And resolves to F. And the original score sa says F7. I prefer the F major seven so much better because now all I have to do is put my uh, pinky here on the eighth fret and play the A and D strings. Actually, I keep this ringing. Then I make a little embellishment that's not in the original lead sheet. Uh, D string 575. Five. That's just uh, A minor uh, pentatonic or A minor scale. Oh, sorry. I'll leave it here and shape an A, uh, E flat 9 chord around it. That's the original chord again. That's six, five already lying here. Six, six of the inner four strings. And I kind of arpeggiate through it. String by string. So because this is half a bar and half a bar in a ballad is pretty long. So to kind of give it a little movement, I arpeggiate. All right, then back to D minor 11. Uh, I just play 5-5-5 five, five, five up until the um, G string first and then the B string follows on the 6th, 8, 5 of E. That's the same thing just in reverse that we had at the beginning of the phrase. G13, that's 3, uh, sorry, 3, 4, 5 and three by barring, right? Comes from this chord. And then I lift this up and I get the third of the B string. Here's a better angle. All right, oh, sorry. And now we have four chords. This is the first house. We are at the end of the A1 section and this is the first house and we have four chords in four fourths. Um, e minor 11, same as D minor on the seventh fret, seven, 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 eight. E flat nine. I could have gone down here, down here, but I need to stay up on this melody. I need this melody, so. This is an, a little trickier E flat 9 chord. 11, 11, 10, and 8. All right? I want to practice this a little bit. A flat major 7, sharp 5. I made it a sharp 5. All you have to do is slide down one and wrap these fingers around. 11, 10, 9, 8, like a slash in a four strings. That's a cool sounding chord, isn't it? Oops. 
Ja. And D flat 7 flat 5. That's the same as the B flat we had before, but on a ninth fret. 9, 9, 10, and 8. All right, so now I'm play, I play phrase number 2A, which is with the uh, first house uh, for you. 3, 4. And now you repeat everything, the entire A section, except for that last bar with those four rather difficult uh, chords. And instead of those four chords, instead of the last bar, you go to a C6 chord. So you come from the D minor, G13, and now resolve to C6. That's an A minor with a C in bass. Third, second, second, and first of the inner four strings. One, then a second time. Then you leave this A minor chord and uh, F sharp in bass gives you F sharp half diminished. Two, 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 one. Don't play the A string. Well, it would fit, it's the minor third, but don't play it. Then B7 flat nine. Two, one, two, and one by barring in a four strings. That's a two five that leads us to the B section, okay? Two, two chord, and here's the five chord, B7 flat nine, and the uh, open B string. So, one, two, three, four, and... Welcome to the B section. The first four bars are actually two bars that are repeated. So we have an E minor 6, which is the same as a C sharp half diminished. So, and they're both used here. The first one is the E minor 6, um, 5, 6, 5 by barring, and the 7. That's an inversion of E minor 6. Five, six, five, seven, and plus the E bass to make clear that it's an E minor six and not a C sharp half diminished. So you have to mute by touching the A string. You have to mute the A string. Then you can strum with your thumb or with your pick. That's a really fat sound. Then you lift this off and play the E string on the fifth. Then Pinky goes to the eight of the B string. One triple let. Then the same thing, but no more E string. Just from the D string. Triple let. Then F sharp minor seven, minor eleven. It is actually F sharp on the second, two, two, and open B string. Don't play the E string. Right. Then I play the B string again. And now it gets a little bluesy, the five chord. All right, I approach it via the open A string, first of the A, and here is my B that I'm targeting. And now again, instead of just strumming through it, I arpeggiate it. B, D sharp, the first of the D string, A, the second of the G string, the open B string. That's just a regular open chord, okay? Then the same thing, E minor 7, C sharp, a half diminished, F sharp minor 7, but this time I don't play the B string again, just once. And B7. That's all there is to it. I played one more time for you. Three, four. One. 
All right, we're almost done. Uh, phrase number four has some open chords. At least that's how I arranged it. We have an E minor and with the E on top. So I have an E minor triad here, open E string, uh, fifth of D, fourth of G, and fifth of B. Don't play the A string. Stretch to the F sharp, that's the second of the uh, E string. Here we go. I have a stupid angle here for myself, <laughs> but perfect for you. So, and you uh, slide for, from the second to the third fret of the E string, right? Then play those uh, lower strings again up to the B string. Then arpeggiate through E, D, and G string. One triple M to fill the chord. Now I go to A7. Take advantage of the open A string again. You could play the entire chord like this. Make sure though that the E string isn't sounding anymore. So when you go into the open A string, your thumb should touch the E string simultaneously. Okay, so when this still rings, now it stops ringing. Okay, open A string, five of D, six of G, and five of B. Or just fret it, it doesn't matter. All right, A7. 7th fret of B string and you slide. I think you have to let go because this is very uncomfortable. So lift off the other fingers. That's A7. Uh, where are we? All right. And then A7 flat 9, which is the same as a C sharp diminished chord. C sharp, 4th fret. Here you go. 5, 3, 5, inner 4 strings. Right. Um, um, and then arpeggiate A, D, and B strings. Okay, from the beginning. Resolution D minor, same as the E minor, but two down, and I don't have an, have an open string now. So just three, two, and three, D, G, and B strings. Two more uh, times on the B string. And now some strange chords um, in regard to the uh, changes. I mean, A flat 13, 4, 4, 5, 6, <coughs> down to the flat 5, that's the third of the B string. Let these fingers ring, let ring as much as possible to the 6. So from D minor. D flat 7 flat 9. 4, 3, 4, 3 in a 4 strings. And then the lower 3 strings, A, D and G string, twice to kind of fill up for a half bar. Play them softer, quieter because the melody is the first one. Then you move up half and you rearrange your fingers to a D diminished, which stands for the G altered chord that resolves back to the A section, which starts with the C major. So, five, six, four, six. D diminished or G seven flat nine. All right. Uh, let me repeat this entire phrase number four at slow tempo. Three, four. All right, and the last A3 section is the same as the first A1 or A2, and we actually play the last two bars differently. So the first six bars are completely identical. After that E flat nine, remember that embellishment that led to the E flat nine. After that, we go to D minor seven, like we had it before, actually 11 but we just play 5-5-5 five, five, five till the D string now, G string, sorry, then the B string on the 6th, 8, 
6. And now we have a G7 flat 9 that leads us to the end chord, the C. And we play a diminished chord for that. We learned that that's possible already. 3, 4, 3, 4. That's an F diminished. And since diminished re um, are not our patches, chords repeat themselves all the three frets. We climb up three frets and we here we have another one, the same thing. Six, seven, six, seven this time resolves to C six nine. C is on the eight, seven of G, eight, eight of the upper two strings. So three, four. If you're into jazz ballads, I have plenty of jazz ballads in chord melody style up here on my YouTube channel. Check them out. There are easy ones, harder ones, all kind of stuff here. All right. If you like this video, please give me a fat thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that little bell notification so you never miss anything. And share the love. Thank you. I see you next week. Servus, Papa. Thank you.